G'day, I'm James and welcome to the second video on our story of quadratics. In fact, the story of area, symmetry and the quadrus method for solving quadratic equations. It's a grand story. In fact, this second lecture is about something called the quadratic formula. In fact, the beauty and the thinking behind the quadratic formula. I will show you how we've been doing the quadratic formula all along. We've actually done it already. No need to memorize it because we've been doing it. But then I'll show you where it comes from. That's the theme of today's lecture. All right, but to get us going, here's a puzzle. I'm thinking of two numbers. The two numbers in my head. I'm not going to tell you what my numbers are, but I will tell you two facts about my two numbers. Namely, they sum to 10 and they multiply together to give a product of 24. What two numbers sum to 10 and multiply to give 24? Actually, you're probably guessing already. The two numbers are what? Four and six? All right, too easy, too easy. That wasn't my puzzle. My puzzle is actually not 24. They have a product of 25. Two numbers that sum to 10, whose product is 25? Can you think of them? Or actually, maybe I'm a little bit sneaky. I never said the two numbers had to be different. So actually, five and five add to 10, and five times five is 25. So I'm thinking five and five. All right, but that wasn't my puzzle. That, that might be puzzle. There might have been a slight trick there, but that wasn't my trick. I'm actually wondering about two numbers that sum to 10 and have product 26. Now things aren't so straightforward. Which two numbers have a, pro a sum of 10 and multiply together to give a product of 26? Can you find some? Can you do it? Give it a try. All right, so let's get the quadrus method, the method of completing the quadrus, completing the square, back in our heads. In fact, here's the puzzle I left off at the end of last video for you to do. So I'll do it now just to remind us what the process was. There are several steps. First of all, there's five. This five in front of the x squared is annoying. It's not a perfect square. So I have to draw the little area model, the square model of this. This piece of area of five x squared doesn't have nice dimensions unless I multiply the whole equation through by another five. If I do that, I'll get 25 x squared minus 15 x plus 10 equals 20. And now I have a lovely piece, 25 x squared there. Five x, five x. Except this puzzle has an annoying feature to it. Namely, it's got an odd middle number, which means I want negative seven and a half and negative seven and a half. Now I can do it, I can make it work, but fractions are difficult to work with. I'm going to avoid fractions. And the way we did that last time was actually multiply now by four. Now doubling wasn't quite enough. Multiplying by four was good because it keeps the number in front a square number. 100 x squared minus 60 x plus 40 equals 80. So let's solve that equation instead, which I know seems absurd because I've just made the numbers huge. But the point is, it's made the picture nice. So to give myself a little bit more room here. So here's my picture. 100 x squared, lovely. It must come from 10 x and 10 x. Keeping the numbers friendly for my, my poor hard brain here. All right, 10 x and 10 x is that piece, done. Minus 60 x, keep it symmetrical. Minus 30 x, minus 30 x, done. Which means something times 10 x makes minus 30 x, negative three, negative three. Great, which means the missing piece to complete the square is negative three to negative three in area nine. I don't have nine, okay, but I won't panic because if I subtract 31 from both sides, minus 31, minus 31, I'll now have the equation, I'll do it in red, uh, 100 x squared minus 60 x plus nine equals uh, 50, 49, 49. And why did I bother doing all that crazy work? Because these are the pieces, those ones right there, are the pieces that make the square fit the 10x minus 3 by 10x minus 3. 10x minus, 10x minus 3 is a square, 10x minus 3 as a square is all that, and it has apparently area 49, and there I am in a level 2 problem. Does this ring a bell? Let me just finish it up this time. So 10x minus 3, something squared is 49, so that better be 7 or negative 7. We'll do arithmetic, you can have both the positive and negative versions. Uh, add 3, so 10x is 10 or uh, negative 4, and divide by uh, t uh, 10 now, x is 1 or negative 4 tenths. And I suppose I should reduce the simplify that fraction. I know, but I think most curricula want people to, so I'll simplify it too, I'll be good. So x is one or negative two fifths. 
Bingo. That is the quadratus method, literally completing the square, and it will solve any quadratic equation you know that you want to do. You might have to you push it through, it'll work beautifully. All right, but today's topic is of the quadratic formula, the general formula. So what I'm gonna do now is show you this is the quadratic formula. It is, we've just done the quadratic formula. I know it doesn't look like it, don't even know what the quadratic formula is yet, but here it is. I'm gonna do it for us right now. I'm gonna derive the quadratic formula and I'm gonna to have to clean my board in order to do that. So I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, let's now talk about the quadratic formula. We've done it. So I need to do this very method, not with specific numbers, but with more abstract numbers. So that's a general formula. So here is an abstract quadratic equation. It's some number times x squared. Yep, some number times x squared. Plus some number times x. Yep, some number times x. Plus some number c. And now, if you've studied quadratics before, you might have been very perturbed that I never bothered changing the right-hand numbers. Most people insist, please make the right-hand number zero. I never did. I never did. Though most people want to be equal to zero. So that's one difference between me and what other people do. So they don't like plus two equals four. They're gonna want me to subtract four from both sides. So I get a zero on the right and a negative two there. So in which case, that is a general quadratic, a quadratic equation. And in this one, a is five, a is five, number in front of x squared, plus bx plus negative three x, so b is negative three here, plus c plus negative two, so c is negative two. So here is a specific instance of this general quadratic equation. All right, now I can solve this general quadratic equation in exactly the way I'd solve this one. I'll do exactly the same method. In fact, the first thing we did here is multiply by five to make sure the front number was nice. Okay, so let me multiply by, well, it won't be five this time, we'll multiply by a. So I'll get a squared x squared plus a b x plus a c equals zero. And then we had a danger here that this middle number was odd. Now, I don't know about a b, maybe it's even, maybe it's odd, but let me cover myself by doing the same thing. We multiply by four next, so let me multiply by four here as well. 4a squared x squared plus 4abx plus 4ac equals 0. So let's work with that equation instead. Now, it's going to be exactly the same work, except I've got pretty nasty looking symbols for numbers here, so it's going to be visually complicated, but actually intellectually it's the same, no different. Here goes, I'm going to draw the square. First of all, I draw the square, duh, 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 duh. Let's have to go. you can see it on the board. All right. 4a squared x squared, 4a squared x squared, must come from 2ax and 2ax, is that right? Have I got that correctly? All right, 4abx, keep it symmetrical, just like I did over here. Keep it symmetrical, so it'd be 2abx, 2abx. All right, grand, got that sorted out. Something times 2ax makes 2abx. B times 2ax makes 2abx. B times 2ax makes 2abx. Beautiful. This is looking good. And to complete the square, it means the final piece I want is b times b. b times b is b squared. But we have a mismatch. I have a 4ac instead. Well, I can make that work. Let me get rid of the 4ac on both sides. Let me subtract 4ac, subtract 4ac from the left and from the right. And let me add a b squared, add a b squared here and add a b squared here, and then I'll have a b squared on that side, ooh, very messy, sorry, and a b squared and a minus 4ac on the right-hand side. So what does my equation look like? But I'll do it in red now, just to make my board a little more clearer. 4a squared x squared plus 4abx plus b squared. So I took away the 4ac and I added a b squared, equals zero, take away 4ac, add a b squared. So I've got a b squared and I've got a negative 4ac, so I've got this crazy equation equals b squared minus 4ac. If you've seen this formula before, you might be thinking, hmm, b squared minus 4ac, that's interesting. Oh, but let me keep going. Why did I do all this work? Because that is precisely all the parts that make up a square. Which square? This square, 2ax plus b by 2x plus b. So this is telling me 2ax plus b as a square is b squared minus 4ac. 
something squared is b squared minus 4ac. Oh, so my something better be the square root of that or the negative version of that square root. So let me write that down. 2ax plus b must be the square root of b squared minus 4ac or the negative version of the b squared minus 4ac. Okay, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Um, it's getting messy. Can I just erase some of the board? Is it okay if I get, well, maybe we're okay. Uh, let's add negative b to everything. So negative b, we'll get rid of that. Add a negative b, add negative b. So I've got that 2ax equals, now if you remember early, most people like to put the integers first and then the square root. So I'll just follow convention and do the same thing. Negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Or negative b, take away the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Oh, this is looking good. And now I want x all by itself. 2ax is looking like this thing or this thing. So dividing by 2a, I've got the advantage of the whiteboard. I can just do that. Wow. X must be this horrible formula or it must be this horrible formula. Negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a or negative b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Whoa, whoa. But my point is, my point is, do you see, I just, even though it's more abstract and looks scarier, it's exactly the same method as this. We've been doing the quadratic formula all along. This quadratic formula is actually just the quadrus method, just written in pure algebra without any sense of the understanding of what is really going on with squares. It's really just the squares, playing with the squares. That's all that actually is. So let me um, write this more clearly. So I think now you've got, got all this. You can pause here and ad admire my mess if you like. Look how messy that is. Sorry, I'm very messy. But let me now clean the board. I'll do it with my hand. Leave the original equation. And whoops. Oh, I'll erase that part. I'll do it again. And then we can practice the formula. So the formula is x is negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a or the one that came from the negative version of the square root minus in there. In fact, some people are sneaky. In fact, a lot of people are sneaky. In fact, most everyone is sneaky. That is right, plus or minus there. Put the two formulas together in one little hit, noticing that one has a plus sign in the middle and one has a minus sign in the middle and leave it at that. So here is the famous quadratic formula. All right, so I guess most people in school curricula are required to memorize it. I don't actually have it in my head. When I actually have to solve a quadratic, most often I will just quickly draw a square in the margins. It takes a little bit longer, and that's fine. I don't mind taking longer, because that's just who I am. I'm a mathematician. Does, speed doesn't matter. But sometimes speed is important in life, so if speed's important to you, you might want to have this in your head and just write down the answer. In fact, let's practice writing down the answer. This one, this one. Remember here, A was five, B is negative 3, and C is negative 2. And the thing is, here's the difference between me and the quadratic formula. You need an equation that equals 0. So if you've got stuff on the right-hand side, you better subtract it and get equal 0. All right, so actually one thing I don't like about the quadratic formula. It has to be equal 0. <sighs> A little annoyance. Oh, well. Oh, well. Okay, so let's try it. So according to the formula, according to the formula, this equation in purple has solution x would be negative b. Uh, what's b? It's negative 3. So negative negative 3 is 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Negative 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times a times c. 4 times 5 times negative 2. 4 times 5 is 20 times negative, negative 40 minus negative 40 minus negative 40 all over all over twice a twice 5. All over twice 5 is 10. So that is, it's equal to 3 plus or minus uh, 9 minus negative 40, uh, 9 plus 40, 49. Uh, oh, 3 plus or minus the square root of 49. 3 plus or minus 7 over 10. So that actually gives me 3 plus 7 over 10, which is 10 over 10, or it gives me 3 minus 7 over 10, which is negative 4 over 10, which is what we had before, 1 or negative 2 fifths. Beautiful. So that's how you use the quadratic formula. This is the quadratic formula. People have it in their heads, memorize it, great, go for it. Or just do the square method, fine, go for it, great. Actually, I need to be honest, I need to be honest. 
there is one place where actually I would use the quadratic formula over everything else. You know, all the examples you often get in school books have nice integer whole numbers. If one were to solve a quadratic equation like this one, here's something really be miserable. 1.3x squared plus pi over the square root of 3x minus uh, 17 uh, over root 2.5 equals 0. If the numbers a, b, and c are horrible, it'd probably be miserable doing the square method on that, though you can make it work. And I'd probably go to the quadratic formula and use it there. But actually, it's still miserable. Look at all the things you have to do with these horrible numbers. By the way, that's just a miserable quadratic equation. What can you do? Well, you can do the quadratic formula. You could do the square method. But you'd be playing with the messy, messy numbers. All right. Got that? The quadratic formula is actually just the quadrus method in disguise. So you've now got a choice. If you like, just use the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic equation. Warning, you need equals zero for it. Or just draw the square method like I do. Do whatever takes you fancy. If you've got the time to do the square method, do the square method. It's kind of lovely. If you need to be quick and fast for some reason, okay, then be quick and fast. Okay, it's all good stuff. But it's all one thing. It's all the quadrus method.